Good afternoon, friends. Happy New Year. In 2019, I am just doing this topic to give you some basic idea about the human geography. So the question is first come that what is human geography? What is the definition of human geography? In the definition, we are talking about the two important words. One is human, and another is geography. So when I'm talking about the human, everyone can understand it's about the man. So we are trying to understand where the man lived. what kind of work they have done and what is the impact of their activity and their locate and their situation on the geography here the geography means every phenomena which we find on the earth or land surface so mainly in the human geography we are trying to understand what kind of phenomena we have seen throughout the world why this kind of phenomena has been found and why and how does it create with the effect of human intervention human activity with this note we can easily identify the basic components of the human geography so the next one is about the components of human geography in human geography the first one is about the space in my last class i have talking about this particular one so here i am just recollect some of the important points space can be divided into two parts one is objective and second one is subjective so objective space is very homogeneous by nature and it is perceived by the people equally but the subjective space is is also depending on the attributes means it varies from one to another in which context people are understanding this particular space it's totally depend on the human perception human understanding human intentions suppose i am talking about the india then it is a objective space everyone understand it properly but when i am talking about the climatic zone of india then india come out with a different layout and when i am talking about the economic zone of india we may get some different zone so it depending on the researcher or the students or anyone on which context or in which context they are understanding the particular space next one is place it's very abstract and is very a uh, visible one one can easily understand it it can be measurable next one is location it can be divided into two parts one is absolute and relative when we define a particular location with the help of lot longitudinal and latitudinal extension then it is called the absolute location but when we define a particular location on respect of other phenomena it is called the relative location then this human settlement human settlement can be different type it can be clustered it can be uniform it can be dispersed but why these things are happen we are trying to understand it in human geography then the human activity what kind of activity human perform it can be primary it can be secondary it can be tertiary and quaternary quinary also distance is an important portion of human geography because in the concept of distance we are talking about the distance into different context when i'm talking about distance in kilometer we can measure it so it's a conventional distance idea second we can understand the distance in respect of the time we need to go from a particular point to the second point sometimes we also use the concept of the economy or the monetary value of a particular distance next accessibility is very important one because it's defined it's give us idea that which kind of uh, location which kind of situation is found in a particular place and is it really favorable for the person to access the basic uh, needs of their life next is agglomeration it's not just about the human settlement but also about the economic activities so in human geography are trying to understand why the people are agglomerated in a particular area or why different kinds of economic activities are found in a particular area second is about the diffusions because human activity or human knowledge is depending on their culture what kind of behavior they've learned from their ancestors so here we also trying to understand that how far this type of cultural components spread away from one place to another or sometimes within different section of the society next how we understand this component so the methodology we use both the quantitative and qualitative methodology in quantitative sections we are trying to understand these phenomena with the help of some statistical or some kind of mathematical equations mathematical formulas and we are trying to make out some theories 
and models and in the qualitative section we are taking some new kind of approach like participant observations interview method because we are dealing with the humans and human society is very dynamic so it's very difficult to put up in a you know all the society in a particular kind of model next we are talking about the need present trends in human geography when a, when the geography has started its journey it's mainly uh, there's no particular divisions in the geography section with time there are two important parts has come up one is physical another is human so in the physical geography people are trying to understand the land surface different kinds of land forms different kinds of activity of the natural agent and how they modify the land surface in the human geography people are mainly trying to understand the man environment relationship but after that the main question has come to the mind of the geographers that what should be the perfect method to understand this kind of phenomena in the physical geography as this kind of phenomena are very homogeneous by nature throughout the world is very easy to put out the systematic methodology means here the whole world are conceived as a particular homogeneous space but the problem is come with the human geography as human society differs from one place to another it's very difficult to put up all the worlds and the society in a particular kind of setup this reason regional geography has come up to understand the human aspect or the man environment relationship and as systematic geography deals with theory model and sometime kind of explanation of some phenomena they are mainly given emphasis on the quantitative portion in regional geography the same thing has happened people are giving emphasis on the quantitative method means they are trying to put make up some new theories model building statistics and other methods of science but with time some new dimensions come up these are the qualitative portions or the qualitative methodology to understand the man environment relationship with this note when the classical period of geography started and the end after some times we you know beside physical geography urban geography and social geography has taken a very good turn and it is the time when the social geography become very famous after the post modernism when people are trying to understand every phenomena differently means they are not putting the idea that a phenomena can be similar to every situation in this context some new concept some new branches of human geography has come up and this is a cultural geography welfare geography geography of gender feminist geography geography of tourism there are several branches have come up nowadays and all of them are trying to understand the relationship between the man and environment but take one thing in your mind this environment can be divided into two parts physical and also the social so human geography is somehow mainly trying to give emphasis on the man and social environment relationship now the next and the last section of today's lecture is the approach of human geography you know when the people are trying to understand the man environment relationship in the very first time they are giving emphasis on the environmental superiority means that environment is superior than the human skills human knowledge and human civilization so people have to follow the rules and regulation of the environment if they have to survive on the world and this concept is very much supported by all the german geographers and the ancient geographers of different places but what happened that after some time when people have become so much skilled they have become so much knowledgeable they invented different kind of technology they have tried to understand that no the nature is not superior the if they no or they try to understand try to develop some new kind of technology somehow they can modify the nature and this way human put up their position as equal as the nature 
This concept is called the heat possibilism. This concept is mainly supported by the French geographers Vida de la Blush and his students. One they are trying to say that human is definitely as important part of nature. Nature put up so many options for them and humans choose one of them according to the understand according to their need and they also consider that if which one is the best for them. After the determinism and possibilism a new dichotomy has come up. In man environment relationship who is superior human or the environment. This problem can be solved with the new idea of go and stop determinism which is called the new determinism and this concept is totally developed by the Griffith Teller. What he has said, he has said that human is important components of this world and nature is also very important for the survival of the human civilization. Nature always makes its own route and human also make its own way to develop, to flourish or to spread. But they have a kind of interaction with each other and human civilization, human beings have a tendency to find out the best option which is found in the particular environment. So there is no concept of the superiority. Both of them are depending on each other and they somehow choose a particular options and they do with this option for a few time but when they have found some new ones they have to change their way of life in this way we have seen different kind of society has come up starting with agrarian society then industrial society so there is no you know conflict between the man and environment and about the superiority both of them are important for the survival of the both this phenomena, both these components. With this note, I am completing my this uh, my lecture for today, and I hope that you get some idea, and it will be helpful to complete your study for this new semester. All the best. Thank you.